<clears throat> Hello, this is a video recording for the MD Connect Performance Portal. Um, in this training, you will learn how to use the portal and a little bit about our marketing program. Uh, MD Connect is a marketing firm specializing in clinical trial recruitment and um, the way we get leads to site coordinators and investigator sites is through the portal. Um, so let's take a look a little bit at our flow of where these potential patients and subjects come from. So this is a little bit about how referrals are generated. This is straight from the training manual, which everyone should receive. Um, so the media channels that we primarily manage are Google, Facebook, Bing, as well as uh, MD Connect's online content network. These are uh, subjects that are sourced from ads that we run digitally. We also do run ads in uh, newspapers as well as radio. Um, the thing that this, uh, all of these sources have in common is the trial itself is um, advertised to a user and all of those users or all of those individuals visit our online pre-screener. I'll show you that right now. The online pre-screener is hosted at a website, diabetesstudy.org. This is a uh, five-page website with content about the study, qualifications about the study, uh, some general information about clinical trials, as well as the patient pre-screener. Um, the online pre-screener is brief. Uh, there are seven questions currently um, on this pre-screener, and the screen that happens online is initial study qualification. So in the flow, um, what we're determining is whether or not they qualify to become a referral and get passed to the investigator site. So the way we do that pass is, uh, or the way we alert you is uh, via email. So as soon as that form that I showed you here, um, that form is submitted online and they choose a potential site and also opt in to communication, um, that lead or that referral is created and that's when the investigator site needs to follow up. Um, during that follow-up, uh, of course, you'll go through your, your normal workflow and processes about the trial, commitment to travel, additional screening qualifications, etc. So let's flip over to the portal itself, and you can see once that referral is created, you've received that email that says log into the portal. There'll actually be a direct link right out of that email to make it easy to navigate to this login screen. Uh, everyone who is using the software has a username and a password. Once you have that, just log in, and um, you will see uh, first a HIPAA agreement. Let's go ahead and accept that. And then you'll see the open referrals record screen. So this first initial screen where you log in shows referrals that need to be contacted immediately. So these are folks who have submitted that online screen uh, and they've said, yes, I'd like to be contacted by a site. Uh, generally, we recommend same-day uh, follow-up uh, or, you know, as quickly as you possibly can. So, in this case, let's take a look at a record. We'll call this uh, record TU, initials TU. So, let's take a look at TU. Um, we do that by opening the record on that, on that screen. I'll make sure everyone got that. So just view record, hit that button. And once you're into the record, um, you'll see the information that we collect online about that individual subject. So the first module is about the patient. Any answers that they gave online will be listed here. The second module is the online pre-screen results. So the results of the questions on the screener are... Uh, housed in our database and displayed for each record um, uh, on the record screen. This next box, this is for use uh, for sites who are employing our call center. This training is for sites who are not using the call center, so you won't see any contact history here. If you do uh, contact the record, say, uh, you know, spoke 
to spouse call back tomorrow and you update it, those contact notes will log down here. So if anytime you need to write something about uh, the interaction with this subject and you want to log it, this is where it would show up. So the next little bit on this right hand is how to contact the patient. Much of this is, is, is self-explanatory. Um, displaying the email address here reveals the email address. Clicking this button will launch an email window if your uh, uh, email software is designed to set up to uh, do that. And here for the phone number, there are two ways to contact the patient. The first one is to display the phone number and that phone number is revealed and go ahead and call the patient. We also have developed a uh, functionality called click to call. If you have several calls to make in a row and uh, it's convenient for you to uh, use a number that does not have a telephone extension. So for instance, here's my cell phone. Um, if I wanted to make say three, four, five calls in a row, I would simply enter my phone number, my cell phone there, um, and hit the button call patient. So what happens is the per per performance portal will dial my cell phone number or whatever number that you put in there. Uh, it will then ring. I'll pick up that phone number and then um, it automatically dials the subject and connects the two. So if you use this once, you'll see that it's very easy to use, it works well, it, um, and saves you from dialing lots of phone numbers. So that's the basics here uh, about the patient, pre-screen results, contact history, and then how to contact the patient. Next I'll talk a little bit about patient status and how to move through each of those statuses. So let's talk about each of these statuses. So um, the first one I'll talk about is unchanged. So let's say you try the subject by phone and you can't get in touch, there's no answer. You might just want to write unchanged, update, and that's it. And you can go back to your open referral screen. Um, and that will just log a contact that's been made. Um, additional statuses. So Let's say you have contacted this patient a half a dozen times. We, we recommend uh, you know, three to six times before you say, I can't, can't get a hold of this person. Lead loss removed is the status you would select here. That actually takes it out of the queue, takes it out of the referral qualified queue, and separates it out. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. I can just show you... Um, what, what, what happens. So if that is selected to you will, will not be in that, uh, uh, that, that, that in, in your open referrals. It now has a referral count of eight. So let's go on to the next referral, GA. So we'll look at GA and here's another status. Um, disqualified. So disqualified would be if you talk to a patient and you're on the phone and for some reason um, say they're taking an excluded medication or perhaps uh, what they uh, entered in the online screen of BMI is incorrect or gee they just live too far you would go ahead and update that record so this record is G GX pardon me so this is record GX We'll go ahead and update. They're disqualified because of site distance. We'll go back to open referral screen. You'll see the count is down to seven. So our next record, XT, let's take a look at XT. And XT, uh, we are going to go ahead and schedule an appointment with XT. So XT, uh, we've gone through our protocols when speaking to the to subject, and we'd like to schedule them in for a visit to the uh investigator site. So this works as expected. Uh, status is appointment scheduled. Once appointment scheduled is uh, selected, a date and time feature will be updated here. 
Um, so let's say we wanted to have them in a Friday, um, March uh, 17th, or 2017. So that's the date selected up here. Today's date will be highlighted. We want to say, gosh, 10 o'clock in the morning, use these sliders, hit update, and then that time of appointment is connected to this record. It's very important to note that the appointment date in this record should be the screen visit date in the IVRS. Many sites, the initial appointment um, is just that, an initial appointment. It may not be the screen visit date. Ultimately, we'd like all of the records to have the screen visit date that's in the IVRS match the appointment date that is in the individual appointment record. Let's uh, go ahead and look at the appointment screen next. So before we flip over to the appointment screen, we'll just note a couple items. One is um, those uh, uh, different statuses that I talked about are listed here in a pop-up window if you want to check there. Um, so we've scheduled this appointment. They're coming in on the 31st at 10 a.m. We've hit update, and you'll notice the status has changed to appointment scheduled. Let's go back to the open referral screen. That um, individual, I believe it was XT, is no longer on this screen. They've moved simply over to the appointment screen. So there they are, XT, So we just worked on. Let's go ahead and view that record and review a couple of the items that um, are different about appointments. Appointments are the next step in the process. And you'll notice patient status, we have some additional choices, consented, randomized, enrolled, appointment no-show, not consented. So once the appointment comes, so let's pretend it's Friday, TJIF, and it's past 10 o'clock, we've talked to this uh, subject, and we simply want to log what's happened. So if they've consented, you'd select consented and enter the patient ID here, okay? This patient ID would be logged right there, and you'd hit update. Um, as soon as you hit update, that patient ID is so stored. Um, so that's all you really need to do. The appointment date here is, as I said before, the appointment date logged in the status is the screen visit date in the IVRS. If it takes three, four, five appointments before that happens, you don't need to change this date every time you look at the record. It's simply that one date. Um, if they randomized or enrolled, you would select that next. If they've not co consented, you'd select that. If you'd site screen failed the subject, the status would be update, updated there as well. So that's really the only thing you need to do about these uh, this patient status is once they come in, update it to these various fields. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the advanced features and where records go and how to see them down the line. Um, you may have sort of, might, if there are hand raisers, you'd probably see some hands raised. It's simply using that filter button um, on the main screen. So let's take a look at that. So here's our our patient XT, they've consented, we're not changing this date. Uh, we already updated this, if you want to do it again, just for sake of clarity, there's the update. We go back to our appointment screen, XT is no longer there, uh, or pardon me, they are there uh, because we haven't changed the appointment date, but they are also on the consented screen. So there's XT, so XT will live in, um, appointments, they'll also live in consented, so they're easy to find. Um, so let's say XT comes in, and we want to change this to site screen failed. You'll notice once site screen fail is chosen as a status, the reasons once again are uh, are, are, are available to say, G, not taking required medication, we do 999, we'd update it. And that record would now live 
in site screen fail. So you notice here I chose site, site pre-screen fail. That would be when you're talking to them, they're actually in site screen fail where they've come in and you've determined that's where the failure is. So there's that, our, our record XD. Let's go ahead and look at that record again. Um, and at this point, let's say you've made a mistake and G didn't mean to site screen fail them. You'll notice once that disposition uh, is chosen on site screen, site screen fail, um, the way to get that record back, if you ever needed to do that, would be to go to all records and hit the control. So here I am at the all records screen, and I want to get that record back. So uh, our, our record XF. So here we are, all records, select that, and control F brings up a search panel, and you type in a few letters of that uh, subject's name. So uh, XRY, XRYKP is a difficult name. Hopefully it's just Susie or Ben, and that would be easy to find. You'd view that record, and you'll notice on the All Records screen, all of the different statuses are unlocked. So if we wanted to get them back to, gee, they randomized or enrolled, um, you could select that status, update the patient ID, and you're done. So uh, this is set back to the last view you use. So in this case, all records. Generally, you navigate back to open referrals or to your appointment screen. So that's the overview. Um, just to summarize the real important points, the, the two biggest screens folks will be working at are open referrals. There's always a count there. There's appointment screen, um, always a count there. And if you make an error you, or you want to find somebody, you can always go on the all record screen, hit control F to find them. Um, we're always looking to improve the software. We hope it's uh, easy to use for folks if there's feedback. Um, people should have contact uh, information for MD Connect. Get us feedback. We'd like to improve it. And we look forward to uh, a great program. Thanks so much. So what you're viewing now is the MD Connect Performance Portal login screen. It's a fairly um, uh, expected uh, user flow, username, password. Uh, each uh, recipient who is on the uh, receiving end of referrals will receive an email from MD Connect with their username and password. Once you have that, uh, you can go ahead and log in. So the first screen upon login is the open referral screen. And these are subjects that have been online pre-screened um, at our website. Uh, every time uh, a subject passes online pre-screened, an email is sent to uh, the investigator site and the site coordinators who are designated contacts uh, through the program. So you'll receive a real-time email. As soon as that email is generated, those referrals show up in this open referral screen. Um, first thing you might notice is the name is, is blurred out. We have uh, uh, safeguards in our end that we do not see patient data. So what we're looking at here is scramble. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, let's call this first record HGCAS. So we notice HGCAS came in. We need to um, contact that record. So let's go ahead and open that up. Do that by hitting View Record, and a record screen pops up. I'll walk everyone through uh, what's on this screen, but it's typical information, and it's uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. So in the first section is the patient. You'll find name, address, city, state, uh, height, weight, date of birth. Any information that's collected online will show up in this screen. Um, you can minimize that window. You can expand that window. But anything that is collected online 
will show up in this first um, this first module. Um, the second module is the online pre-screen results. So these are the results that the subject has um, answered from the website. So you'll be able to see their answers here and confirm those answers with the subject when you get them on the phone. Um, the next module, uh, call center contact history, that is an optional module. And uh, if you're viewing this training, you have not signed up for call center services. If you're interested in call center services, please be in touch. But uh, if you're contacting the subject directly and asking your own additional screening questions of a clinical nature or other nature, um, you are skipping the call center step. So you won't see any history here. So this box here, this is where your contact history will show up as well as any notes once you have um, talked to that uh, record. Um, in the right-hand side, there are two ways to contact the patient. The first is telephone. The second is email. Anytime you see a, um, a uh, question mark, uh, there is, that we call that a tooltip, and a box will pop up with additional instruction. So to contact the patient, to call them, you would simply click on the display phone number. That displays the phone number and you can call the subject. If you'd like to email the subject, you would click on display email address, copy this into your email client, or you would click this button in your email client. If it's set up to do so, will pop a window that you can email the subject directly. So the general workflow, the first thing to do is call the record. And there's the phone number. Um, click to call is a function that I'll explain next. So click to call is for those uh, site coordinators that might have, you know, three, four, five, six phone calls to make in a row, and you simply don't want to dial the phone number so many times. Um, the convenience feature we've built is if you would like to enter the phone number where you uh, are receiving phone calls or making phone calls, that's the number you would put in this box. And what happens is when you hit the call patient now button, it actually dials that phone number. So 617-645-9954 would ring. You would pick up the phone number, and then it uh, dials the patient next and connects the two phone numbers. If you, ch if you try it out once, it's pretty self-explanatory. Some people think uh, it's, it's, it's magic, but it's really just uh, simple connecting the phone number uh, technology, and it saves people some time in dialing the phone number if you want to take advantage of that, um, of that feature. Um, so let's talk a little bit now about uh, status and how that works and how you would use this box to um, update your workflow. So when a subject comes in, their initial status is referral qualified, and one of several outcomes can happen as a result of that phone call. The first is you schedule an appointment. If that's the case, uh, you would go ahead and click on schedule appointment. Once you've changed the status to appointment scheduled, an appointment date box uh, appears, and you simply click in that, and you would choose the date. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say March 30th, and we're going to say 9 at 9 a.m. So that's 9 a.m. We update that, and once I update that, you'll notice that the status has automatically been changed to appointment scheduled. At this point. You've um, scheduled the subject, HG CAS, in for appointment on the 30th of March at 9 a.m. So let's see what happens to that record next. So what happens to that record next is it is automatically moved to the appointment bucket. So there's HG CAS right there and the appointment schedule. We'll go into that record, and that same 
date and appointment time is listed there. So let's pretend uh, another outcome happens. If they've consented, all you need to do is put the patient ID here. The appointment date that's listed in this field will always be the screened appointment date in the IVRS. The system is designed to house one appointment date, and that appointment date should be the screening visit date that's in the IVRS. Other information that can be housed from the IVRS to the portal is the patient ID. So at the time where an ID is available, You'd simply enter it there and hit update in the record. This record is now um, updated, and as long as that appointment is in the future, that's where that appointment date will, uh, or pardon me, that record will live. Um, also, if the appointment has passed, it'll also live in open appointments. So appointments is really one of the key two places that you want to uh, visit and update the record. Additional workflow, once the subject moves beyond consented, randomized can be selected, patient ID can be updated, hitting update captures the data. Additionally, if uh, 